it became a recommended practice for cloud migration to be done in phases in order to minimize the risk, uh, speed of the deployment process, and ensure the continuity of the services. The easiest and most recommended way of doing that is to lift and shift, also known as pro-hosting your application and its data to the cloud with the minimum possible impact to the code. During a few minutes, you will walk through the process of doing so for a Spring Boot application. Hello, Oriano Dasi over here for another video. But this one is going to be the part one of a series because subsequent videos are coming later during the following weeks to cover the scalability aspect of your cloud migration, the continuous integration and continuous deployment, the monitoring aspect of your application, the domain name setup with the SSL certificate and especially some advanced security measures that you can apply right away. So subscribe in order to be informed as we go on. Migrating an application with the lift and shift method is often done by updating a few configuration files here and there and taking into consideration the platform as a service model in which we are only responsible for the app and its data with the infrastructure and such being handled by the cloud provider in use. Many services are available to do so, but depending on your specific case, one may be favor over others. For this specific showcase, we opted for using Amazon Web Services Elastic Beanstalk, which has an intuitive command line interface that we can play with in order to achieve the desired result. Elastic Beanstalk is an Amazon service that enables developers and organizations to deploy their applications in the cloud with the least possible impact to the code. And prior to moving forward, I have to point it out because it's even possible to do so without any uh, cloud experience and in a very friendly way, for sure. So you only have to provide a few settings, your source code, of course, and at the end, it's going to provision your infrastructure, perform all the steps in order to deploy your application, provide you a few tools for you to monitor your installation, and of course, to manage the version of your application. Finally, you can have the root 53 domain name in front of your infrastructure, a load balancer to distribute the request to a few resources being created in a VPC. You can have a few EC2 instances and relational database services uh, as well. And CloudWatch is being used to monitor your infrastructure and sometimes to have more metrics in order to know what is going on in your system. It supports a wide range of programming languages or platforms like Java, .NET, Docker, Go, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, and maybe more in the future. For this demo, here is the context. As a company, we have a Java Spring Boot application, along with a MySQL database hosted on-premise in order to save our users. And as part of our long-term digitalization strategies, we would like to quickly move to the cloud. Considering that our team has less or close to no cloud experience beforehand. But let's go straight to the point. Migrating that application is only a five steps process that anyone can apply right away. And that I will summarize into three steps. The first step is for you to create the executable of the application. It is often a file that can be run anywhere for the application to be available. For our case, it is a file with the .jar extension. The second step is about defining the environment in which the application is going to be deployed. We will do so by using Elastic Beanstalk. And the third step is actually um, uploading that executable using Elastic Beanstalk in order for the application to get deployed automatically. But you first have to install the CLI that we are going to use for that. So I do recommend to go over the official documentation. You have two ways to install the Elastic Beanstalk CLI, the manual process or uh, by using the setup script. The manual process is something that we use to do in which we're going to use a few um, package managers like Pipe, for example. 
but you have to make sure that you, you are using almost the latest version of Python 3.7 or something closer for it to work properly. So you only have to launch the command pipe install AWS CLI and normally you should have it on your computer. But I assume that you already have AWS CLI properly working with the right user account of course. Let's initialize the project. To do so, we have to make sure that we are in the right folder. On the left side, I have that Spring Boot application that we are going to migrate. But from the command line, I have to jump on that folder too. From here, I can run the command eb init to initialize the project. A few questions are being asked in the terminal, but it is important to point out that you can follow the exact same steps from the UI. Of course, if you have access to the Elastic install, uh, service maybe from your home page or from the search bar over here on the top so uh, now you have to reply to the question first i'm going to deploy it uh, using the us east one region not virginia so i will choose the option one the region one being selected i have a new question now which application to use i have created an application before i can reuse it or i can just press the option three to create a new one and then a default name is provided. Most of the time I prefer to select that default name to move forward. So I type the enter button on small. And then I have to choose the platform to deploy the application uh, with. For us, it is Java. Option five. And the version of Java is uh, Java 17. So I will choose Coreto 17 over here. And then um, I have to choose if the instances that are going to be created should be accessible by using SSH. Uh, I will choose no for now, but we will come back to this uh, configuration very later in the series. So good. Now that we have answered to all the questions, we should have a folder created on the left called dot elastic install, which has uh, all the configurations that we have just defined to initialize our project. Let's define the environment in which the project is going to get deployed in. The Elastic Build Stark create command is available for that. But for us to move quicker, I have a prepare command uh, that I have created on my side. So I'm just going to type it over here in the command line. I will provide this one as well, just down in the description of the video. So it has a set of options. The first one is the, the simple. It only instructs Elastic Bean Style to set up the environment by using a simple application. That is fine for now because later we are going to deploy our application, which will replace the sample in the environment. The single is only about using a single instance of our EC2 uh, for now. If you do remember about the, uh, the diagrams, it's possible to have multiple EC2 instances as part of your environment, but we will come back to that a later. The timeout is only about the automation. If uh, it exceeds 30 minutes, it's going to stop. So sometimes I prefer um, to put a, a higher value over here. The instance type is the type of instance that you want for your infrastructure. So me, I prefer T2 micro because we are just about to do a demo, not even else. It is not a production ready setup anyway. And now you have to provide your database information, the username, the password, the environment variables as well can be provided as part of this command. I strongly put an accent on that because by default, Elastic Bean Stark use the port 5000 to communicate with your app. That means your app has to run on that port unless you provide the port environment variable that define a different port your application is only on. So I had to make a few changes to the app to be able for it to be deployed by using the pod coming from the environment variable. And then the tax, you press on the enter button to run the command. We have to create a deployment package, the jar file, which is unexecutable for the app. I first have to point out the changes that I have done within the application. You will see that the Spring Boot application has uh, two controllers, one model, a repository, and a service, of course. But a special file over here is, is the server port customizer, uh, which is created in order for the application to use the port environment variable defined uh, in the project. 
So if you define the port environment variable, it's going to be used to deploy the app, which is important, especially for the environment that we have created. And then uh, we have the application of properties file, which use some environment variables coming from Elastic being installed. After the environment is being created, your database credentials are going to be accessible by using these uh, environment variables, AGS, hostname, pod, DB name, username, and password. That being done, uh, we have a script available within the app already. So uh, you simply have to run it, build a sesh, and it's going to build the app for you. Whoops, I have to jump in the right folder first before doing that. Yeah, of course, and then build sh. This is a normal build, and if you open the build of sh uh, file, you will see that it simply um, makes sure to remove the previous build artifact before running the build, the compilation on small by using Maven. Normally, at the end, we should have a successful message. If it's not the case, maybe you have an issue with your application itself. So you have to make sure that you migrate an application that used to work even on your computer. Um, the environment is still being created in the meantime. And yet we have a success message here. And if you go back in the target folder, we should see the jar file being created. But as part of the script, the build script, we copy that jar file into a new file called runnable, the jar accessible from the root folder over here. In the step four, we are going to create a link between the artifact or the jar file, the executable file that we created as part of the build step and the environment that we created before. So you can see that the compilation was a success as we have seen together. And then we have the runnable the jar file created over here. We just go back in the configuration file being created as part of the initialization. And we add a deploy statement. And in it, we are just going to add an artifact and the location where is the artifact is going to be taken. And for us, it is from the root folder, of course, we have access to the runnable file over here. Runnable.jar, that is it. If you go back to the terminal to see if the, the environment has been created, yeah, this is the case. You can see from the setting over here that it has been created. And if you scroll up in the config file of Elastic Build Startup, you can see that it added a new environment instruction or property over here. Now let's go back to, if you open, um, our AWS account, you can see that environment over here. You can click on it, of course, to have more information about what is included. But we will come back on that in another video. From the terminal, since I have the executables, I have the environment and a link between both of them, you can just run the command in order to deploy your application now. And this is being done simply by doing EB deploy and we provide the option stage and it's going for sure to push your application um, in your environment before even doing so you can run the command eb open to open the environment because it has been deployed by using um, a simple application as i said before so it's possible to open it normally it should be possible to open it um, whoops i have an error Let's try again, EB open. Normally it is just going to open the domain name generated for your infrastructure in your browser directly. I have it open in another tab of my browser. So I will bring it over to this tab instead so that we see what I have. So here is the application for now, because it has been deployed by using a sample project. But now, since we are performing a new deployment in the command line, 
which is where you use our artifact now to post your application online. So this application is going to be replaced by our application. But if you go back, try to refresh the page since the deployment is done, now you have our Spring application running. The Spring Boot application is a simple backend that has a few endpoints to manage your users. So we are going to uh, call those endpoints to see if it is working. So um, I come back to the get users request where I can change the endpoint to provide the one generated by Elastic Beanstalk. So if I run this one to get the users, of course the list should be empty. Yeah. And now let's try to create a new user. I open that endpoint from here and I call I call it by providing the data, of course, uh, to see if it's going to create a user. Yeah, and the age of that user is one. So if I go back to the endpoint to get the users, now I should see what I have just created, of course. And if I get a, a user by using its ID, this endpoint should work as well. ID1, go. I should have the data. If I provide some, something that doesn't exist, I should have not found send back. We have just covered how to migrate a Spring Boot application to the cloud. The next video is going to uh, have more overview of what configuration you can provide to your environment for it to scale without too much effort still. Bye for now.